Hello and welcome. Today we're going to do a sine series example. And so again, we're going to start by uh, casting this as a, um, a heat problem, a heat uh, equation problem. So we know that uh, when we have an initial condition, f of x, and we have a uh, heat transfer on a rod, so a rod uh, from 0 all the way to L. And we want to have heat transfer in that. And we have the condition, the boundary condition, or the BC, if you will, will be 0 temp. So what we mean, 0 U equals L is equal to 0. And we know that the initial condition then has to be represented as a sine series. Okay, so we learned from before what we do then is we extend f to uh, an f odd extension. And then we compute um, our odd extension as our, as our Fourier series where f0 of x is equal to f of x on, sorry, it should be x greater than 0 and less than l. Okay, f sine n pi over l x. So let's talk about the specific example of f of x equal to cosine of x over the bar Uh, 0 to pi. Okay, uh, so we're, it's going to be equal to cosine of x on the interior, but then it's going to be 0 right on the boundaries. So we're going to have um, at x equals 0 and x equals l. And so, so what we're talking about here is a function that looks like this. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to a new page just to give myself some runway here. So our initial condition then is going to be f of x is equal to cosine of x on the interior of the bar. Sorry, that should be greater than, a strict greater than and less than uh, pi. And it's going to be 0 on, uh, on x is equal to 0 or l. All right, so let's look at what this, what this function looks like. Here is 0 to pi, and we have the initial profile, temperature profile, that looks like this. And that's cosine of x. Okay. All right. And so what we need to do now is talk about f odd extension, which is going to be cosine of x on the interval 0 to pi. And it's going to be negative cosine of x on the interval negative pi to 0. All right, so let's write that down. Let's draw out what that will look like. There's negative pi. So what we're going to do then is over this part, is it's going to go like this. OK, so that is the odd periodic extension uh, of cosine. So what's interesting about this example is, of course, we're going to use a sine series to, ex to Fourier expand uh, a cosine function, which is what we think about as an even function. So that right there is even. But by making an odd extension, which is this piecewise defined function, we get these two parts, and this creates an odd function. We can see it's odd. If I take a value x here, if I take a value negative x, we get its negative version across the, across the zero line. All right, so we also need a few more things. We haven't defined all our points. So we want um, it to be zero on the points x equals zero, uh, because of course we're talking about initial condition for, uh, for, a, for a zero temp. 
So we have to piecewise define, all right, so at, at x equals pi, it also has to be zero as well, right? So we're going to put some open circles there to indicate where our, uh, and for symmetry, we're also going to put at negative pi um, our function is zero. So is this piecewise smooth? Yes. There are some discontinuities. But uh, those discontinuities are are countably many, or uh, they're they're finitely many over this interval from negative pi to pi, and they're countably many over the over the the whole entire real line, and because of that, uh, this is now what we call our odd extension, and uh, it's piecewise smooth. So we can expand it with a Fourier series, which turns out to be a sine series. So again, our interval is uh, 0 to pi, so it's just going to be nx. Uh, so and then bn is then going to be, and we've defined that as, um, as, uh, as 2 over pi from 0 to pi of cosine of x, because that's the, that's the value, uh, that's the function value over this this interval here times sine of nx dx. So recall, remember, we, we've always known that, that, that sine and cosine are orthogonal or, or, or like this, but that was over the interval a negative pi to pi. Over the interval uh, 0 to pi, this isn't necessarily 0. We'll, we'll find out what it is in a second. We'll actually compute it. Uh, but just note this. Um, so let, let's compute what these values are so we can write out our Fourier series. So let's do that. So what we have then is, um, so what we need to do is compute bn is equal to 2 over pi integral 0 to pi of cosine x times sine nx dx. All right, so let's compute this. So I'm, I'm, let's not worry about that constant right now and just compute this part right there. Uh, and what we're going to use is integration by parts. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to take the antiderivative of cosine, and that becomes sine x sine nx. And we're going to evaluate that as 0 to pi. And then we uh, subtract 0 to pi sine x and then we put a we take the derivative of this function here and that we put an n out front and that becomes a cosine n x dx now if i evaluate this whole thing at zero and pi the whole thing goes to zero okay so we're off to a good start and now we're going to take another integration by parts so we have a, a, a negative n there We'll stick that out front, and now we have a uh, we have to take the antiderivative sine, which is a negative cosine uh, of x cosine n x, and we're going to evaluate that at zero to pi again, and then we're going to take a plus zero to pi, and we have a cosine x, and then we take the derivative of cosine, which becomes a negative sign, so we have to scratch that positive and put a negative there, and then put another n because we're taking the derivative of this whole thing, and that becomes a sine n x dx. Now you notice then that this this bracketed expression contains an integral that was the original integral we want to wanted to compute. So what we really want to do then is go is move everything over to the other side. So we have a cos uh, zero to pi cosine x sine n x dx and there was one copy of those and then what we're going to do is okay so if I multiply this in that becomes negative and negative makes a positive but when I move it over the other side of the equal sign we get a um, uh, 
pardon me, it becomes a negative n squared. And this becomes, we keep all this stuff over here on the other side of the equal sign, it becomes a, uh, um, uh, let's, let's be careful about how we compute it. This becomes a negative n uh, minus cosine pi cosine n pi uh, plus 1. All right, so we'll keep on with this. This is going to be an n 1 uh, uh, this, sorry, I need to get my signs correct. This be is, uh, so notice that this cosine pi is a negative 1, so it gets rid of those, that negative sign there, so that becomes a positive. It becomes cosine n pi plus 1. I'm going to put a negative sign in front of all of that. And so now this integral here, I'm just going to put that, put ditto, uh, is going to become uh, n cosine n pi plus 1 all over n squared minus 1. So I, I changed the sign of this and I got rid of that negative sign. So there we go. So that's what that integral is. And so now bn, of course, is going to be uh, this integral times 2 over pi. So we have 2 times n cosine n pi plus 1 all over n squared minus 1 quantity, and we'll just put that pi down there. Again, we're just multiplying this term there. All right, so what does this look like? Okay, so cosine, when n, when n is even, or when n is odd, this becomes a negative 1, right? Negative 1 and a positive 1 cancel. So we know that this thing is always going to be 0 for n odd. And now when it's even, we get something, this becomes a, a, a positive 1. So we get two of those. 2 times 2 becomes a 4n over pi n squared minus 1. And that's for n even. Okay, so there we go. There's our result. So we can write this down. So now what I'm going to do is actually write down the full Fourier series. So cosine of x, the expansion of cosine of x um, is going to be the sum n equals, uh, should be careful here, n equals 1 to infinity is equal to bn sine nx where bn is equal to 4n over pi n squared minus 1 for n even and 0 for n odd. So how else can I write this? Um, because I'm only using half of these terms, I might as well then take k to be equal to, uh, I'll take 2k is equal to n, right? And so now this is always even and then write it as follows. So we can write um, the sum k equals 1 to infinity. And then we can write it as uh, 4. And then we make that an 8. Um, and 8k all over pi. And then what we do is we plug in for n uh, 4k squared minus 1 sine 2kx. All right, so that covers us now. We don't have to write down this piecewise defined thing. We can just write this down. And so here, the 2k will always skip over the odd powers, and we get a representation. So now we have this really clever trick. And so this holds only on the interval, uh, not including the points. So what was the value, what is the value at x equals 0 and x equals pi? Remember, we required 
as zero attempts at the boundary. But recall that uh, Fourier series have this nice property. Remember that the, the, the full odd extension looked like this. There was zero, there was pi, there's negative pi, and we had that discontinuity, and we know that uh, the Fourier series converges to mean mean values at discontinuities. We required, and by definition, an odd extension, the mean value there is always going to be f odd is equal to zero at those discontinuous points. So this function here, which I'll call f, the odd extension, over the whole interval, so it's, so I shouldn't write this there, it's equal to cosine of x on this open interval, but it's equal, the, the true function, this, this function here, defined by this Fourier series, is equal to cosine x on the open interval, and it's zero on x equals zero and pi. And that is a, a, a really fascinating thing. These are all continuous functions, and we sum up infinitely many of them, and the result is a function with discontinuities at zero and pi. And they repeat forever. We think about keep going, and so on and so forth, uh, for uh, three pi, uh, 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 five pi, and so on and so forth forward. Every point the Fourier series here will always converge to points that are zero right on these discontinuities. So there's an example of how to represent the function cosine with a sine series. It's going to be equal, it'll, we require that these coefficients are such, but then we can always represent functions, even, even looking functions, with odd functions. And so, uh, of course, in the exercises and in the book, you can check out the, the alternative case where you can represent sine sine of x with uh, cosine functions by taking an even extension. But that we'll leave for some other time. Thank you very much.